Have you ever wondered how many times you would equalise on a 65 metre descent? No, neither have I. But as the MV Coral Island finally appears out of the depths, I get my camera ready, lights on, and it's off we go filming. This no expense spared artistic impression, kindly drawn up by Dave Ross of Tacacia, will help you figure out where we are in the wreck with the aid of the little red dot. But let's be honest, even Leonardo DiCaprio having a really bad day can tell we're starting on the bow. I'm not sure pressure is the word I'm looking for, but I've got $110 worth of helium in my back gas. I'm 65 metres from the surface. We can only make one dive on the wreck, and I've got a maximum time of 20 minutes to get around the boat and film it, so that I can make a half decent film for Brian and Ralph at Rags 2. Actually, pressure is the word I'm looking for. The day hadn't started too well, as Rags 2's depth founder wasn't working, and dredging the bottom with a weighted line didn't show conclusively where the wreck was. After a quick dive to 60 metres on air, much to Ralph's relief, we found her. In Sod's Law, later we found one of the four concrete weights lost while dredging for the wreck. All along, the GPS coordinates we were using were bang on. The MV Coral Island was a general cargo vessel and built in Japan in 1965. She measured length 73.4 metres, height 11.43 metres and had a beam of 5.21 metres. She was operated by the Coral Island Resorts Development Corporation and was often used for transporting medical supplies for a government agency. In July 1982, she was en route from Batangas to Manila when she suffered an explosion during engine testing. Sadly, 21 of the 95 people on board perished in the subsequent fire. Survivors were soon picked up by passing ships while the ship continued to burn before finally sinking three days later on July 29, not far from the Fortune Island, 14 kilometres off the coast of Batangas. The dive site is located in a busy shipping lane, and it's quite disconcerting hearing the rumble of large container ships go by. They could really mess up your day if you came across their propeller on a 6 metre deco stop. But fortunately for the wreck being in a busy place and being in deep water, it's a pleasant surprise to see the propeller is still intact and hasn't been salvaged. A definite rarity in Philippine wrecks. Diving using helium is a wonderful thing. If I were using air now, I would be completely off my face with narcosis. But my surprise of seeing the propeller has caused me to stay filming it a little too long. At this point, we've been down about 13 minutes. I've now got to get my skates on if I'm to be able to film the whole ship. One of the things that strikes me as we swim over the wreck is how much life there is on it. Okay, so there's no big fish, but there are plenty of Gorgonian fans and soft corals, and at 60 metres deep, that indicates to me that visibility in these waters is normally quite good. Time is passing quickly now, and I would really like to get to the forward cargo hold to film the remains of a motorbike and a truck chassis. Apparently, there's also an old anchor down there too. We are now over the area where the major fire damage is visible. Presumably, one of these shafts would lead to the engine room. The more I technically dive wrecks, the more I appreciate their appeal. Certainly, they are a lot more predictable than diving a reef. You don't have to sit on a seamount for 30 minutes in the hope that one comes along out of the murk for 30 seconds before it disappears. But being a videographer, there are added dimensions to the dive. I have to think about accessibility for my camera rig and how to light it to try and tell the ship's story since it left the ocean surface. Today though, was all about using all of my 16,000 lumens of lighting and getting around it as quickly as possible without blowing my air. Next year, I'm going on a DPV course. Ralph just teases himself by having a quick look at the front cargo hold. We really wanted to pop down there and have a look at the motorbike and the truck chassis, but the clock has beaten us and it's time to go. One last look around and it's time to start the ascent. 
As always in these situations when I've had a cracking dive, I have that feeling of, if only I had another five more minutes. But they soon disappear when I remember that all I have to look at for the next hour or so is my dive team's ugly mugs. Until the next time, Coral Island. Cheers.